Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today, I want to say just a few words about nuts and bolts. Not a whole lot, not real detailed, but just some of the different kind of fasteners that you might encounter nuts and bolts in your MG. So these are, have all been replated. Well, one of them's brand new, but they're all, they've all been re replated. This one has a circle with three hash marks out of the outside. So that means it's a British manufactured bolt. And there's a series of letters up here on the top that might say GSK or GKN. Some of the earlier bolts said Linreed, L-I-N-R-E-A-D. That's the name of the manufacturer. So here's an American bolt. It does not have the, z the zero, the hole in the middle. It just has the three hash marks. Three hash marks means it's a grade five bolt. Here we've got one with no markings on it. So that might have been a chrome bolt, although it's been replated. Chrome doesn't replate. Although it looks pretty shiny here on the edges, maybe it, it is a chrome bolt. Um, for a, a decorative use, which aren't embossed. They also aren't grade five. Here's another one, shorter one. Again, this either says GKN or GSK at the top, but again, it's got the circle with the three hash marks way out on the outer circumference. And here's yet another example of, of a British bolt. Now when you go to do a restoration, you can take all the nuts and bolts off your car and you can, you can uh, clean them all up, wire wheel them, get them as clean as you can, and then take them to your local zinc plater and have them all zinc plated so they all come out looking absolutely beautiful. Here's two bolts. These are both British. You can tell from the heads, maybe if you can see them in the picture here, this one's pretty uh, was pretty rusty at, at some point. This one is threaded full length. This one's only threaded part way. There's lots of different applications inside your MG and lots of the lots of the nuts and bolts have definite positions. I do have a decoder which will be available on our website pretty soon uh, on how you can tell one bolt from another. Let's take a look at, at uh, lock washers. You know, here we've got the normal he helical lock washer, just a split ring. And we've got an internal star washer. Those are, are rarely used on the MG, but when you're reassembling, they can be extremely handy. Say, for instance, you're putting a master cylinder back in the master cylinder box on an MGB, clutch master cylinder. There's a bolt which comes from the inside um, and uh, you, you're supposed to put a um, lock washer on it and a nut. And you're supposed to hold this with a wrench, which is all but impossible. It is possible, but all but impossible. And then tighten it up. If you simply put an internal star washer, now this is 3 8 this is too big for a 5 16 but if you take an internal star washer and put it on the bolt, you can push it through, hold it with your finger, put the lock washer and the nut on, tighten it up by hand, and then put a wrench on it and continue turning it from the front, a wrench or a socket. You do not have to hold it from the back. The star washer will keep that bolt from spinning. It's a really cool trick to being able to reinstall some nuts and bolts very quickly. Anyway, these are the two common, common types of lock washers that you would see in the car. In external star, you do not see. External stars are used for electrical work. There's a bunch of different types of nuts. Here we've got just a normal 5 16 5 16 nut. It's a half an inch on the outside, 5 16 to 24 on the, on the inside. Here we have a brass nut. Brass nuts are used on the exhaust manifold and on the, on the uh, exhaust uh, pipe to the exhaust manifold. That's their only, only use in the car, but they come loose. Brass nuts come loose. They need to be retightened from time to time.
The advantage is they do not rust. They do not rust against the bolt. That is their advantage. The disadvantage again, they come loose. Then we have a nylock. So at the top of this nut, we've got some nylon that's been pressed inside here. And so when you go to tighten it up, it tightens up to here. Now you have to have a wrench and pull it with, I don't know, maybe five pounds of torque round and round and that nylon grips the threads of the bolt and it won't come undone. It's a nylock, it's a real nice lock bolt, but you can't use it any place where there's a lot of heat because it'll melt the nylon. Lastly, we've got a prevailing torque nut. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this side of the, of the nut you can see is nice, the hole in the middle is nice and round. But when I turn it over, you can see that it's a little, a little bit elliptical. It's been squished at the top. So this this will thread on up to there. Now you need five pounds or so of torque to carry it down. These prevailing torque nuts are the nuts for using on the manifold, the, to hold the manifold to the head and to hold the exhaust pipe to the manifold. These are great. Of course, you should use a little bit of anti-seize on them so they don't rust over a period of time. We used to use these exclusively. Um, th I mean, we always use them uh, reinstalling exhaust systems and manifolds to cylinder heads. They're just great. Lastly, we've got what's called the arrow nut. So you can see there's a slit, 180, and then around the edge, there's another slit around here and these are designed to be crushed at the top. They're not unlike the prevailing nut, uh, prevailing torque, uh, but these are called aero nuts, A-E-R-O. Maybe they used them in airplanes, I, I don't know. I remember them, um, well here they are from a, from a stud from the front of an MGB cross member. Um, I remember them from uh, the later T-type engines that, that didn't have a castellated nut, which I don't have as an, an example here, but you know a castellated nut is just a little bit taller than this and then has slits across it, either three or six, depending on whether you're measuring the, the whole line or not, and you tighten it up and then you can put a, a, a split pin, a cotter pin, uh, through a hole in the bolt and the whole, de the whole goal is to keep it from loosening, coming undone. But on the later T-types, they had, uh, uh, in the rod bolts, they had these arrow nuts. So these have limited ap application. The nylocks and the arrow nuts, you can reuse. Of course, you're warned not to use them, but if you simply take this nut off, and you put this on the back side of your, of your vise, on the anvil part of your vise, and take a hammer and go, bam! Then it'll crack the top of this down, it'll squish the nylon in, and you can reuse it. Same thing with the arrow nut, but all you really have to do is just put this in the vise and squeeze these two parts towards each other, just a little bit, just a little bit, and, uh, and then that will restore its locking function. So that's not all the nuts and bolts in the car. There's screws, there's studs, there's, there's all, kinds of, all kinds of stuff, but that's just sort of an overall. So if, if that helps you a little bit when you're putting your car back together, great. Remember that the MGA and the MGB are almost totally, exclusively American fine thread. Um, it's actually UNF, Unified National Fine, uh, which isn't exactly the same as SAE, but it is completely interchangeable. So you can buy all these nuts and bolts, if not from your hardware store, from uh, uh, McMaster Car, that's an excellent place to get, you've got to buy them in boxes of 100 or 25, it's, it's a quantity, it's like going to Costco, you know can't buy one shrimp at Costco. You can buy a five gallon pail of shrimp if you like them a lot. Um, anyway, McMaster Car sells them in bulk, but that's a real nice place to, to pick up these nuts and bolts. So hope that's helped you out. Until then, safety fast.